In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of all ages. Amen. The first Sunday of Lent, the Lord reminds us of our value. The Lord is trying to, to remind us as we go through this journey of Lent every year, what our value is. If you looked carefully, the Lord was talking about the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. And what did he say about them? If you look carefully later on in this passage, he says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So what does that mean? If you want to compare the value of the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, and then he says, You, are you not of more value? What is your value? This is something that kind of escapes us with the worries of life. We're always reminded of so many responsibilities and worries in this world and the strains of life, and we forget our value. I want you throughout Lent to think of your value. When you fast from food, think of your value. When you pray, think of your value. When you read your Bible, think of your value. When you approach Holy Week, think of your value. Your value is the blood of Christ. The Lord did not shed His blood for the lilies of the field. And He did not shed His blood for the birds of the air. And though He created them, and He loves them, He loves every part of His creation. But you are of a particular, very, very high, precious value. I think if we remind ourselves of that, many of the decisions we take or the things we do will be revisited in our day-to-day life. Because I realize, when you sit there thinking or when you stand there praying, remind yourself. Tell yourself you're the daughter of a king. You're the son of a king. This king not only created you and left you to worry about food and clothing, but he created you and set in place everything needed for your eternal salvation, for your restoration in His image, and for you to be with Him where He is. This is not little. And of course, it's easier to speak of, but much easier, uh, and it's harder to remind ourselves and apply in our day-to-day. But the Lord is putting these examples to remind us. Throughout the Gospels, when you read the Gospels, the Lord Jesus always compares things with other things, to give you a sense of your value. If in this passage you compared the lilies and and the birds, in another passage you compared the bread and the fish, all these things the Lord has worked with are just all examples to clarify for you and for me every single moment, every single day, what is our value. Please remind yourself of this. And this will help us not worry. Or and help us when we face tribulation or problems throughout our journey in this life, we will be reminded again, wait a minute, my value is this, therefore I can't worry because He who died for me will surely be with me every single step of the way. So the Lord wants us to remind ourselves of the masters that exist in this world. We have the, That's why when the Lord compared masters, He said, you cannot serve two masters. In verse 24, So automatically he's putting examples that there is more than one possible master out there. There's mammon, which is just material, wealth, possessions, whatever whatever mammon could be for every individual person. But then there is the master, the Lord God of heaven and earth. If you compare mammon, the master, mammon will constantly, constantly, constantly abuse and steal the joy of of the person it is master over. Jesus, the Lord, the master of heaven and earth, says, don't worry, I love you. And that's why they say about money and mammon, they say money is a very good tool or a good servant, but a cruel master. Because once any material possession or anything that I treasure in my heart takes precedence or takes space that it's not allowed to take, Instead of Jesus, my Lord, I become enslaved to it. The Lord Jesus does not call us to be slaves to Him. The Lord Jesus 
calls us to be his children. And that's why when you look in the book of Revelation, at the end of chapter 3, he says, To him and to her who overcomes, I'll grant them to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat with my father on his throne. No other master will ever say that. No other master of any of the masters that exist on earth, of material or persons or power or prestige, or any form of master will ever tell you, come, sit with me on my throne. Because masters are usually selfish, egocentric, and they want the throne for themselves. And the more people in front of them worshiping them, the better. But Jesus, the master, looks at you and says, come, sit with me. Come, dine with me. Just like as he entered Jericho, and he was passing by those streets, and he saw poor Zacchaeus, on that little tree, he told them, today I must eat at your house. Today I must come to you. No master would say that. Any other master would say, where is my invitation? How come you haven't invited me? No, I don't come to you. I only go to this kind of person. For example, Jesus the master tells you, I will come. I will wash you with my blood. I will die for you. And that's why your value and the remembrance of your value before God is so important. So that whatever you do in your walk with Jesus, you're remembering the legacy He leaves before you and the invitation He has prepared for you. So that as you continue your journey in this earth in peace and you fulfill your days in peace according to the will of God, you are always reminded of these things. You are always reminded you are very, very, very precious. Beyond your wildest dreams, that's how precious you are. Nothing on earth will ever give you that same value. No one on earth will ever give you the same value. And if they do, it might be for another motive or an ulterior motive. But Jesus, the Master, gives you that value because He loves you an everlasting, eternal love. So let's pray together today, whether we're at church or at home, and say, Lord, grant me to remember my value, not because I should compare myself as more important than something else, like a bird or a flower, but that I should remember that the bird and the flower are so precious to you that you created them with such delicateness, such beauty, such gentleness. How much more valuable is the human being whom you died for on the cross? May God grant us to keep that always fresh in our minds so that every decision and every track we take is always based on that value, always based on that privilege, and always based on that great everlasting love given to each and every one of us. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Powerful,